New Astronomer's Michael here and thank you for tuning into my channel. In this episode I will show you how to align a finder scope. I received a couple of comments in my equatorial mount video describing a problem that many new astronomers face. Basically when they center an object in the finder scope then look through the OTA's eyepiece they don't see that same object. If you're a more experienced astronomer, the first thing you would suspect is that the finder scope may not be aligned. Using your finder scope is just one process in a series of alignment steps of ever increasing magnification. For example, my first step is to point the telescope in the general direction of the object and then use my tail rad to, the, to refine the alignment. Then I use the finder scope to further align it. And finally, use the eyepiece. They must all be pointing in the same patch of sky. So by process of elimination, aligning your finder scope should be near the top of your troubleshooting list. Aligning your finder scope is pretty easy and you can do this in under 5 minutes depending on how accurate you want it to be. Alright hang on a second, before you can follow along, make sure that you meet the following conditions. Number 1. Your finder scope must have these adjustable knobs or something that will allow it to be adjusted. If it doesn't have that, that means your finder scope is probably a fixed finder scope and it does not need to be adjusted. Number two, if your finder scope is removable, tighten down the mounting screw so that it is securely in place. Number three, make sure that you are in clear sight of an object that is at least a half a mile away or around 800 meters. And finally, number four, have your eyepieces handy. If you need time to get set up, you can pause this video and I'll wait right here. You ready? Here we go. Step one is to find a solid spot to set up your telescope. The best spot is outdoors, but if you have clear sight of an object through a window, that'll do as well. Number two, if your telescope has a cover, I know it's obvious, make sure that you remove it. Sorry, I had to mention that. Step three is to locate an object that is at least a half a mile away or around 800 meters. The object must be still, for example, the top of a light post or rooftops. I don't recommend using treetops because on a windy day like it is today, they will be swaying. And although you can perform this at night, I recommend doing it during the day. But if you have to do it at night, uh, it's going to be a little bit more challenging finding a bright enough uh, target but you can use a light post or you know a light outside someone's house. I don't recommend using stars because as the earth rotates the stars will quickly drift out of your field of view within seconds. But if you have to use stars, I recommend using Polaris because it will remain relatively still. However, that's only true if you're in the northern hemisphere. In the southern hemisphere, I don't know of any stars that is in the southern celestial pole you might have to use land-based objects. Step four is to insert an eyepiece into your telescope's focuser tube uh, and make sure that you choose the one with the lowest magnification. If you don't know what that means yet, um, look at your eyepieces. If they are labeled in millimeters, choose the one with the highest number. If they are labeled in strength, it will probably show an X, choose the one with the lowest number. Step five is to point your telescope at your chosen target and then look through the eyepiece and center that object. Now the object might appear blurry so use your focuser to try to get it as sharp as possible. Um, it doesn't have to be completely sharp as long as you know that that is the object you're targeting. Now if it is just simply too blurry, um, just choose a more distant object because it might be too close. Now in this example I'm going to be targeting a rooftop and the image will appear upside down which is normal for this telescope. And once you've centered the object, try not to move your telescope anymore because if you accidentally jar it, you're going to have to center that object again through your eyepiece. Step six is to look through your finder scope and you will notice that you can see more through it than through your eyepiece because it has a lower magnification. 
chances are the object is nowhere near the center. If it isn't, use the adjustable knobs. In this finder scope there are three knobs, but only two are adjustable. The third one is really a spring-loaded um, knob to provide resistance to hold the finder scope in place. Back out the knobs so that they are at the same starting point in their adjustment range. Step 7 is to tighten the knobs using equal turns until both make contact with the finder scope. Step 8 is to look through the finder scope and use the adjustable knobs to center the object. If your finder scope has crosshairs, it will make it a lot easier to tell whether or not it is centered. Step 9 is to look through your eyepiece again and make sure that the target is still centered. If it is still centered, then you are good to go. Now practice using it. Locate another target using your finder scope and then look through the eyepiece to see if the same object appears. Once your finder scope is aligned, be careful not to jar it out of place while transporting your telescope. Now if you use a higher magnification eyepiece and don't find the same object that you see in your finder scope, it's probably because it needs to be further refined. And this happened to me while uh, I was out stargazing and I had the moon perfectly centered in my finder scope but when I looked through a high powered um, eyepiece, all I could see was a glow. So this is how you further refine the accuracy of your finder scope. Remove the eyepiece in the telescope and insert another one with the next step up in magnification. Now look through the eyepiece and adjust focus if necessary. If the object appears off center, slew your telescope so that the object appears centered. Now look through your finder scope and make fine adjustments again. And as you move up in magnification, the smaller and finer your adjustments will become. So keep doing this to the next eyepiece with a higher magnification until you're satisfied with the accuracy. And there you have it, this is how I align my finder scope. If you have any advice as to further improve this process, please share it in the comments section. Anyway, I hope that this video has helped you, and if it did, please hit that like button or share this video to your friends. Or better yet, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in my next video. As always, clear skies and thanks for watching.